There you are. I knew you were going to show up. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of January 13th, the Martin Luther King Holiday Weekend. So please, enjoy your time off. Now, over the last few weekends, I've been doing a show called Sub Penny Buzz, where we've been looking at stocks that viewers wanted me to look at, and it's been doing fine. But I think it's really important in this bear market that we focus in on niches where gains are being made on a regular basis. One of those niches has been bankruptcies. We've seen a ton of these major exchange companies filing bankruptcy, getting kicked off the major exchanges and coming down to the OTC. And they have been profitable. Some huge gains in short periods of time with multiple bounces back to back to back. We love it. Well, another niche we need to focus in on are these warrants with SPACs. But to understand the full potential of this, I've got to explain a little bit about the SPACs first. Now, while I'm doing this, right up over my head, you're going to see some examples of SPACs. These are all over the last 30 days. I've got the dates there, if it was one day or three days it was running, and how much gains they had. And then we'll focus in on that towards the end of the show. So first thing we want to do is talk about what a SPAC is. Basically, a SPAC is an instrument that helps a private company get onto the public exchange. When a private company decides to go public, it must go through the IPO process, which is expensive, time consuming, and a lot of effort. And there's no guarantee that they're going to be successful once they start. To speed up the IPO process, SPACs have emerged as a cheaper, faster, and easier alternative simply because they've done all the work. They've invested the time, money, and efforts to secure that spot on the major exchange. What they lack is a business. They don't do anything. See, a SPAC is known as a blank check company. They do not offer any services of their own. They have no business. They don't generate any revenues. Their whole purpose is to get on the market, then find a private company that wants to go public or find a company on a lower exchange that wants to uplist. Now, a SPAC brings a heck of a lot more to the deal than just the ticker. In many cases, the management team has specialized skills and talents to support the new business they merge with. When a SPAC comes on the market, they're not allowed to target a specific company, but they can tell us what sector they're looking to get into. Could be cloud, technology, health, whatever. Well, whatever sector they choose, chances are that the management team has skill set in that sector. Say they were going into health. You may find the management team is a bunch of doctors and scientists, but what they really bring is a lot of money. You got to remember, they're selling their shares before they've made a deal. So they're getting all this money in. What's well, being put into an escrow account and being held until they make a deal, then all that money goes to the new company to help them succeed. They invested in them. They want them to succeed. Initially, the shares are sold as units when they come on the market. A unit is a package deal. They go for about $11.50. You get one share and one warrant. And then somewhere down the line, not too far after they come on the market, they break the package open. The units are separated into the stock and into the warrant so that they can each trade separately and they each get their own ticker. The ticker for the warrants are either going to have a W on the end or they're going to have a forward slash WS. You can always identify a warrant pretty easily. Now, SPACs have a lifespan of 18 to 24 months to make and close a deal, though they can file for extensions for extra time if they want. Now, this imposed deadline gives the SPAC management team an incentive to work sincerely and diligently to find and acquire a target company. Now, why are they so invested? Because they get 20% of all the outstanding shares. That is their cut. So as soon as the company starts making money, guess what? These guys have a windfall. They've got millions of dollars of profit just for them. So yeah, they're eager to make a deal and they are definitely eager to see that deal succeed. Now this next piece of information is probably going to just blow your mind, but I swear to God it's true. And if you've been watching my show, you've heard me mention this before. 
If the SPAC fails to consummate a business transaction in the given amount of time, 18 to 24 months, they must close their doors, go out of business and liquidate. What am I saying here? I am saying that the SPAC must return all investments into the stock back to their investors. Me and you is who I'm talking about. We're going to get the money we spent on that stock given back to us. It is literally a money back guarantee on the stock exchange. Have you ever heard of such a thing outside of my show? It is true though, because we are investing in a speculative deal right up front. They give us their word, a promise that in the next 18 to 24 months, they're going to consummate a deal and be making revenues. Well, if they don't fulfill that promise, that is a breach. So we get all of our money back. But here's where it gets really strange. The shares in the SPAC are only worth $10 until they close a deal, actually close a deal and finalize the merger. So if for some reason the stock goes up to $12 on some news and then they go out of business and liquidate, if you bought those shares at $12, you're only going to get $10 back for your shares. That's it. And if for some reason a stock fell to $9 and you bought it at $9, well, if they go out of business and liquidate, you're still going to get $10 back for every share you bought. The fact of the matter is the stock itself has no extra value until they close a deal. So when news comes out, it's the warrants that move. They too are on the major exchanges, but they're penny stocks. They are down at two cents, 10 cents, 30 cents. They are super cheap. And since the stock isn't going to move, all of the motivation, all of the excitement, all of the attention is going to be given to the warrants. And because they're so cheap, you're going to see jumps from two cents to 10 cents in one day. Easy, super easy. And it happens all the time. Now this may seem a little redundant and unnecessary, but I like to keep things simple. And this wee little story shows you just how simple the process of a SPAC really is. We're looking at Emma here. Emma wants to start her own business and she's going to pursue it through a SPAC. She names her company MCOR. She files for it to go public and then she goes on a road show looking for private investors. When she finds her private investors, she sells them units at $10 each. This gives her enough money to actually get the company on the major exchange. Once on the major exchange, she starts selling $10 shares and units to the public and she gets to keep 20% of all the outstanding shares. At this point, Emma starts her search for a target company to acquire. When she finds a company, she then starts to negotiate for acquisition terms. If they come to agreeable terms, it's then up to the shareholders to vote. If they approve it, MCOR buys the new company with all the money they generated from the IPO. Now let's just presume there was 10 million shares in the IPO, a low float, right? 10 million shares, but they're going for $10 each. That's a hundred million dollars that the SPAC is going to pay the new company to come on to the major exchange. What a deal for the new company. They get a hundred million dollars and they get a place on the major exchange. They're going to change the ticker. They're going to change the name and voila, they're up there with their own stock everybody is happy. And there are lots and lots of these to be considering folks. Looking at a chart over the last 11, 12 years, going back to 2009, this shows us how many IPOs, the gray bars, and how many SPACs, the pink bars there are each year. We'll look at 2009. We had one SPAC and about 60 IPOs. In 2017, we had 150 IPOs and about 34 SPACs. But look what happened in 2021. We dropped down to 50 IPOs and surged up to 275 SPACs. Fact of the matter is, folks, SPACs were very much looked down upon like penny stocks are. Oh, they're scams. You can't trust any of them. I know somebody who got taken. You know the story. Well, that's the way it used to be back in the old days with SPACs. Nobody trusted them. Well, you can see right now where our confidence has been put. We are into SPACs. We're loving these SPACs because they are making money and they're generating a lot of gains for the investors.
Now let's take a look at what warrants are. This is why we're here about the warrants. Now that you understand what a SPAC is and the fact that the stock will not move when good news comes, it's going to be the warrant. So when news comes out about them making a deal, thinking about a merger, getting a letter of intent with this company, the stock, the $10 share is not going to move. It's going to be the penny stock warrant that runs. Now, let me give you a list of reasons why I personally like to trade warrants, and I think they're going to be good for you as well. Warrants, first off, are all traded on the major exchanges, which comes with a basket of benefits. First off, they're free to trade. You don't have to pay anything to trade on the major exchanges, not stocks, not warrants. Not like the OTC, you got to pay to get in, you got to pay to get out. We're losing money at both ends. Don't have to worry about that here. Plus, it gives you the freedom to trade the way you want to trade. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that I buy a warrant for five cents a share and I see the price jump up to 10 cents, but nobody's bidding on it. It's just sitting there. Well, I can kick that price up to 10 cents by buying one share for free. It won't cost me anything. Now, true, I am buying one share for twice as much as all my other shares, but I assure you that's not going to affect your average price. Not really. What it's going to affect are your gains. You bought one share, you pushed the price up, that extra gain goes across all the shares you bought. So if you pushed it from five to 10, you just doubled your money by buying one share for free. That's what I like about trading on the major exchanges. I can trade the way I want. Another benefit to trading warrants, they can be traded pre-market after market hours. Did you know that we can trade pre-market after market? Sure we can. On the major exchanges, we all can. You don't need any special permissions. You don't need any special qualifications. You only need one thing to change the time period on your order. Right now, it probably says day. That's for a day trade. Well, this isn't a day trade. It is extended market period. So you've got to have EXT, extended period in there. It could just be extended or it could be day plus extension or good till cancel GTC plus extension. Any extension in there will get your order to be recognized. Otherwise, it's just going to ignore it. Another benefit, which cannot be taken lightly, warrants do not have reverse splits ever. They just don't do it. So you don't ever have to worry about waking up in the morning and having fewer shares than you went to bed with the night before. And the biggest thing I like, honestly, is that there are more regulatory oversights. You're on the major exchange. Let's say you're on the NASDAQ. Well, every single stock on the NASDAQ is being watched and monitored by the NASDAQ. They're watching them all like a hawk. Well, on the OTC, it's decentralized. You have a broker watching this company, another broker watching this company, another broker watching this company. Think of it this way. Centralized, like the NASDAQ, means you got one driver at the wheel. Decentralized means you got a crowd at the wheel. Well, which one do you think is more secure? I like one driver at the wheel. A lot of people do. And after being taken by companies on the OTC that promise dividends and don't give them, no, I'm not talking about HNRC. I think it's still coming. <laughs> I'm talking about other stocks that have done this to me or MMTLP just being yanked off the market after we thought it was going to be there for two more days. Nobody jumped in to fight for us and set things right. We're the OTC. Who cares, right? But if that had happened on the NASDAQ, I guarantee you something would have occurred. Now, something to keep in mind, each warrant, when exercised, gives birth to a new share of common stock, which is added to the outstanding count. So I don't know how many shares of warrants there are. You can find out it is listed in an S1, which S1? Probably one of the earliest. It'll tell you how many warrants there are. When they get cashed in, and they can be cashed in anytime in five years, sometimes 15 years. When they get cashed in, a new share is added to the outstanding. So when there's a cutoff date and they say this is the very last day that warrants can be cashed in, you could see a slew of warrants get cashed in and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch more shares sitting there. That's where they came from. 
Uh, warrants do not pay dividends or come with voting rights. They're not shares of stock. They are promissory notes. They are little contracts. They're coupons. What a warrant does is it gives you the right to buy a share of stock in the future at a guaranteed set discounted price. This is the way it basically works out with most. You get yourself a warrant. It says that you can buy a share of stock at $11.50 any time in the next 50 years. Once it hits $11, it goes live. Well, you're not going to use it when it hits $11. Who wants to pay $11.50 for an $11 share of stock? But four years down the road, when it's at $50, you'll gladly take your warrant, $11.50, put them together, and you get your share of stock that's worth 50 bucks. And you can sell it today, and you can get all that profit in your pocket today. That's why people like warrants. That's why Warren Buffett asks for free warrants every time he helps a company out buying millions and millions and millions of shares. He says, I'll do this if you give me some free warrants. Now, the company doesn't much care because they get paid for those warrants too. It's more money in their pocket. Now, in Warren Buffett's case, they don't get any money. However, when he buys more shares, when he converts those warrants, he will be giving them more money. And that goes to the company. And this is the biggest part in why we've made this show. Warrants move on very little volume. They go further and faster than the stock does. You can literally see these things moving hundreds of percent, even thousands of percent on less than 100,000, less than 50,000 shares, less than 20,000 shares. I have seen lots of them moving under 10,000, even 5,000 shares which can make reading the charts difficult, folks. There's not a lot of liquidity. You're not going to see a bar pop up every five minutes. You can't see what direction it's moving in because it's not moving. It's just sitting there. So it's very important to keep up with the news. Know what deals they're making. Are they signing letters? How close are they to closing this deal? Normally, the first time we hear anything from a SPAC about a deal, that's when you're going to get a huge pop on the warrant. However, sometimes it takes one day, sometimes it runs three days, sometimes there's a delay. So there is a lot of work involved trying to get in and get it right. But if the news has come out, you know it's good news, the warrant hasn't moved yet, right? It's at a very low price, two cents, three cents, and you see that it's down low. It's down low. That's the time to get in, folks. You know it's going to respond. And as soon as they close the deal, as soon as the deal is actually closed, I guarantee you the warrant's going to rise. Anytime the stock of the company looks like it's getting more value, talking about a deal is more value. Getting on the market is more value. Once it is alive and trading, the warrant will be hot as well. So there is some guesswork. I hate to put it that way, but there is some guesswork on when they're going to move. Move. But if it hasn't moved yet and there was good news and you know it was good news, don't be afraid. Just be patient. But as I said, don't put a lot of money on it. Test the waters. Work with $50, $100. See what you can do. See if you can catch it. See if you can get one to multiply up for you and then roll that over into the next warrant. Now, I want to show you what a scan looks like, how I monitor my scans, and I'm going to show you my most current watch list for warrants. Over the last month, I've been doing a lot of work looking for warrants that are hot, and I've got a list put together. I'm going to share that with you right now. So we have jumped on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. So can you sign up and they will give this to you absolutely free. And to use it, all you got to do is keep your account open. That's it. So I'm going to share with you how I monitor warrants. We're not going to look at any charts per se. I just want to show you how I keep up with them through the day. This is my favorite scan. This is set up to monitor warrants through the day. I have it set up between one penny and three dollars, though you could easily drop that down to two dollars with no problem. This is the hot zone, folks. This is where you're going to find those SPAC warrants, as well as other warrants, running hundreds, even thousands of percent gains. Now, I set this up with the biggest gainers up at the top, and then I go a hunting. I look for those tickers that have a WS on the end 
or a W on the end. But you got to remember, if you're looking for a SPAC warrant, you don't want any stock that has a W or WS on the end. For example, the one right here above it, P-H-G-E-W-S. That's a warrant. The name of the company is Biomix Inc. That don't sound like a SPAC to me. SPAC sound like Silver Spike Acquisition. That sounds like a SPAC. A SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. So this Biomix Inc. probably isn't a SPAC. Now, of course, a little bit of research will validate that one way or the other. But let's just presume it's not a SPAC. We see it ran today, had 93% gains with 20,000 shares moving roughly. But chances are she had news, so the investors were split with their excited investments. Some of them went to the warrant, some of them went to the stock. But with a SPAC, you don't get that split. With the SPAC's news, the SPAC itself is not going to move. That $10 share is going to sit there doing hardly nothing at all. So by default, the warrant's going to get all the attention of the investors, and you're going to see that puppy run and run hard. And that's what you have here with Silver Spike acquisition. They did 92% gains today with less than 5,000 shares. And that's what I'm talking about. Little volume moves these warrants farther and faster than the stock by a long shot. And I will keep up with this all day long, monitoring those WS and W stocks, seeing which ones are SPACs and which ones aren't. Now, the other way I like to monitor my warrants is with a watch list. This is the best way, folks. Already done my homework. I know what I'm holding here, and I'm ready, and I'm waiting. So not all of these are SPACs. I put this together about two weeks ago. Most of them are SPACs, but there are some other companies I'm watching. I'm even watching Bed Bath & Beyond for when she files bankruptcy. I want to catch a gain, you know? So yeah, I got that one on my list as well. But most of these are SPACs. Now I'm going to show you one here. Let's take a look at LHC. The ticker for the warrant is LHCIW. I don't know why they threw an I in there. Let's go to the chart. This is LHCIW, the warrant for Leo Holdings Corp. They just came out with news that they are doing a merger with Worldview. This is a stratosphere company. They have these huge weather balloons that are hooked up to us a capsule and it goes way up in the air so high it is right on the edge of space and they monitor a lot of things down on the earth the weather the planet itself but they're also using it to give rides fifty thousand dollars a seat they will take you up for six to eight hours and then bring you back down well when that news came out this thing ran she jumped here from about uh, looking at Oh, just under two cents up to 21 cents. We had over 1400% gains on that run from that news before she fell back, leaving about 400, 500% gains for us to take. That's what I'm talking about. The news came out, the, the warrant ran, and then it fell back. You don't have to hold these folks. You don't have to hold them. Some of them may run again, but you're going to get these big gains the first time you hear the news. And that is one of the most important aspects of this, monitoring that news. Now, I post a lot of news on Twitter about these SPACs. I put warrant watch. I talk about the company, the merger, and then I tell you the warrant and I tell you what to watch. Watch. I do this for my Discord group as well. I like to share this information, but nothing is going to beat your own DD. So go over to Google, put in company SPAC uh, merger or just company merger. Either way, you're going to see them come up. But don't forget to set your time filter, set it for the last 24 hours or week so that you can catch up with what's going on and not be looking too far in the rear. So this is what I do, folks. I monitor the warrants using my scan and I monitor my warrants using my watch list. Start building your watch list, folks. This is where your money's gonna come from. As soon as you see one start to grow, go take a look. See if there was any news today, anything at all. That may be the one you wanna play. You're gonna be real upset if you didn't put something on your watch list, did your DD, and that thing took off.
Hopefully I've shared some good information here with you folks. I am changing the way I trade because the market has changed. It's become very bearish and I've got to find the bulls amongst all the bears. And SPAC warrants, they are mighty bullish. Remember folks, the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See ya.